Hi there, and welcome to Particle Physics Brick by Brick. In this series of videos, we're trying to explain as much about particle physics as we can through the medium of Lego. This is an introductory video where we're going to be talking about the use of Lego as an analogy. And we're going to start with the word analogy. Let's look at the definition. An analogy is a comparison between one thing and another, typically for the purpose of explanation or clarification. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds a lot like me to a scientific theory. Yes, scientific theories aren't written in the language of English. They're written in the language of mathematics. And they're none too simple sometimes. They're quite complex. But nonetheless, scientific theories are only just an explanation or a clarification of exactly how nature works. It's never actually nature itself. Um, and so we can imagine nature like this big Venn diagram, this big beast that we're trying to understand. But the scientific theories currently only cover a small swathe of nature. We know this because there are known unknowns, like dark matter and dark energy, where we have seen evidence from experiment that suggests there is something going on in the universe that we can't explain fundamentally. But of course, there are unknown unknowns, which are, well, I can't tell you because we don't know anything about them just yet. But we know that our scientific theories currently don't explain all of nature. And so what we need to do is to push those theories further to explain more about nature. And sometimes it's useful when learning about scientific theories to deal with everyday analogies. Everyday analogies, such as Lego bricks, for instance. So everyday analogies can help us understand a little bit more about the scientific theory that we're trying to study. But it's never going to explain the entire scientific theory itself, because at some point that analogy will break down unless it is the actual scientific theory. And where we understand where the analogy breaks down, it allows us to understand a little bit more about the scientific theory that we're trying to learn. And my argument is that if we can understand and train ourselves to figure out where everyday analogies break down and scientific theories take over, we might be better at researching and figuring out where scientific theories break down once we've understood them completely and how, therefore, we can understand more about nature and push the horizons of our knowledge. And so the everyday analogy that I'm going to use is Lego bricks. And I'm going to try and use Lego bricks to explain as much of the scientific theory, which is called the standard model of particle physics. Now, of course, I'm in no way going to convince you that a Lego brick is exactly like a particle. I mean, it can't be. It's made up of trillions upon trillions of particles. It's a macroscopic object, which means it's large enough for us to see with the naked eye. That said, we can use certain properties of Lego bricks to try and help us understand a little bit more about those underlying particles. And of course, what particle physicists love to do is they like to take matter and they like to break it apart and destroy it. Now, that's not because they hate the world around them. It's because by breaking apart the entire universe into its most basic building blocks, you can figure out the fundamental bricks from which everything is made. And this is the goal of particle physics. Now, a good thing about Lego bricks is, just like these fundamental particles, Lego bricks are essentially pretty much indestructible. As you can see, only three Lego bricks were harmed during the making of this video. Lego, I'm so sorry. But of course, the other goal of particle physics is to figure out how all of these building blocks piece themselves together to form the matter around us. Because at the end of the day, figuring out what set of building blocks you're supposed to use is only half of the battle. You then need the construction rules. And the construction rules tell you how to piece them together to create the final object you want. And this is one of the major goals of particle physics as well. So we get the building blocks and we also now need to figure out what are the construction rules. And the construction rules of nature are encoded in the forces of nature. And the forces of nature tell us how to piece these particles together to form ever more complex objects. Now, there are other properties of Lego bricks that are good as well. Notice that these bricks have studs, which allows them to piece together to build new, larger things. Those studs are useful for representing those fundamental building blocks that make up matter. And that's why I use studded bricks to represent those particles that we call fermions. But then there are other particles which don't build up matter, which are messenger particles. For those particles, I've chosen to use bricks without studs on, 
because they can't build up to form anything more complex. The exception to this rule are the gluons in the strong force. They have studs because they can form exotic forms of matter. Now again we can use the colours of the Lego bricks as well as the shapes to represent certain things in the standard model of particle physics. For instance, we can use the size of the brick to give an idea of the relative masses of each of these fundamental building blocks. The larger the block, the greater its mass must be. We can also use it to distinguish one type of block from another, such as using colour or using white and black blocks. Using colour or lack of colour allows us to distinguish what types of forces these particles actually interact with. Now of course we can't assign an infinite amount of properties to these building blocks. Essentially size and colour are pretty much the only thing we have when it comes to Lego bricks. There are some weird and wonderful exotic bricks out there but my aim is to use the most basic bricks possible. The reason for this being is that at its heart the universe is pretty simple. There are only a small subset of building blocks that we can actually use and so I wanted to mirror that in this analogy. So I hope I've convinced you that the use of analogies is really important not only to understand scientific theories but also to understand where scientific theories break down. So with the everyday analogy of Lego I'm hoping that I can explain a little bit more about the fundamental physics that is the standard model of particle physics. And where the Lego analogy breaks down, I'm hoping you'll understand a little bit more about the standard model and the particles that make it up. And understanding about the standard model is a key stepping stone in your journey to understanding nature. And who knows, maybe you'll be the researcher to find the piece of evidence that breaks the standard model and leads a new path into understanding nature. Anyway. Now, on to the particle physics. Thanks for listening. If you would like to know more, subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on social media for more information. You could also buy the book. Particle Physics Brick by Brick is available through online retailers and many local bookstores. Other languages are also available. If you follow this bit.ly link, you can also get access to lots of educational resources and information on where you can get your hands on LEGO to play along. LEGO is a registered trademark of the LEGO Group, which does not sponsor, authorise or endorse these videos in any way.